Hi guys, this is a former scientist with experience of around 11 years trying to reach out to you on the topic of coronavirus. Uh, why I'm doing this video and whom I want to reach out, uh, just that everyone is clear, I want to reach out to the general public who has uh, less access to the trustworthy and scientific resources, for example, the information from World Health Organization or institutes who are verified in all different countries. Even if people have access to these resources, many, many of us lack ability to interpret the graphs or some of the data which is given on these websites. We want to speak, so on my behalf, we want to speak the local language of common people and make them aware to take precautions and not to panic. So what are some of the basic facts about virus? The current knowledge as per science or as per today. Coronavirus are a large family of viruses that cause illness ranging from common cold to more severe diseases such as SARS, which is one of the common ones. Uh, this specific strain is a newly identified strain and uh, also there are other coronaviruses which are circulating in animals that have not been identified yet in humans. Uh, COVID-19 specifically is the infectious diseases caused by this recently discovered coronavirus. This new strain and disease were unknown before the outbreak began in China in late December 2019. What are the basic symptoms of this uh, infection? It's fever, cough, shortness of breath. Uh, as also it has been put out by World Health Organization, the symptoms are fever, tiredness and dry cough. Some patients do have pains, nasal, nasal congestion, runny nose, even sore throat. The symptoms are usually mild and begin gradually. Some people become infected but don't develop any symptoms and don't feel unwell. Most people, are, or let's say majority of the people, recover from the disease without requiring a special treatment. Older people and those with underlying medical problems like high blood pressure, heart problems or diabetes are more likely to develop serious illness. Uh, people with fever, cough, difficulty breathing should seek medical attention and this is a guideline by the, by the World Health Organization. Uh, the following symptoms also may, I mean, the symptoms which I mentioned before may appear uh, in 2 to 14 days after exposure. How it, how it is transmitted? People can catch COVID-19 from others who have the virus. The disease can spread from person to person through small droplets from the nose or mouth, which are spread when a person with COVID-19 coughs or exhales. These droplets land on objects and surfaces around the person. Other people that catch COVID-19 by touching these ob objects or surfaces than touching their eyes, nose or mouth. People can also catch COVID-19 if they breathe in droplets from a person with COVID-19 who coughs out or exhales droplets. This is why it has been suggested to have at least one to two meters of distance from a person who is sick. Uh, World Health Organization is doing, is assessing the ongoing research on the ways how this COVID-19 is spread and this is the topic which is evolving. Uh, and there would be more information on this. There are a lot of myths around the whole COVID-19 and the infection. For example, one of them is that tropical countries might not get affected. In general, there is no clear information on this available and it would be only known when the countries, for example, like India or a few other countries, experience what's happening with their population um, in context of the infection and when there is more data available. There is also a question of will I die if I get the virus? Well, the mortality rate currently is low, uh, something around 7 to 8%, but it, it also varies from country to country and depends on the response of every country uh, and it might change. There are also signs that of recovery where almost 90, above 90% population have of the cases who have registered have recovered uh, but this is also a percentage which is evolving and the number might change depending on the final data 
So who is finally at the risk of catching uh, the infection? While people or researchers are still learning about how COVID-19 aff- uh, affects people, but older, generally older people and pers- people with pre-existing medical conditions such as high blood pressure, heart disease, lung disease, cancer or diabetes appear to develop serious illness more often than on others. Please note, it does not refer mean that others cannot catch or others are less susceptible. It might just be that these people act as carrier or they act as agents to carry the, the, the virus and it can spread to the people uh, who are at much higher risk. So are there any medicines? Not yet. There might be news about existing drugs which might have been tried for some patients. Uh, there are vaccines in pipeline but there is no clear drug which is recommended yet. Please do not believe fake news. Uh, world's best scientists are working around the clock to find a solution, but not, until now there is no medicine for this specific virus. According to the World Health Organization, there were more than 30 vaccine candidates which are currently in development, which are based on different platforms. For example, DNA, RNA, protein subunit or vac- vector vaccines. Okay, so there's one term which has been uh, quite in the news, which is social distancing and why there is a need to do it. And the other topic is about the flattening the curve. Why is it so important? Flattening the curve is a textbook public health response to epidemics, including the spread of COVID-19. Once a virus can no longer be contained, which is seen, which appears right now, the goal is to slow its spread. The exponential growth in infections leaves healthcare systems struggling to handle the surge, uh, but fewer people sick at home, services are, aren't overwhelmed, and deaths reduce. This buys time for doctors to treat the flood of patients and researchers to develop vaccines and antiviral therapies. Why are people scared? Uh, because there is not much information on the virus yet and its capacity to infect. There is also a lot of research going on in various institutes, hospitals, companies at the level of prevention, at the level of treatment and all other aspects. Also, there is a lot of uh, misinformation spread through the social media. So please be aware of that. Okay, so specific information about Germany. Uh, Well, there has been a rise in the number in the last few days. Uh, I've also been putting out on social media the numbers and why the graph would still spike up a bit more. It is open how many people in Germany would become infected finally, but it is estimated from the government that 70% of the population might get infected finally. The impact on Germany cannot be predicted. It could be more difficult than a severe flu outbreak, but events also could be milder, which is unpredictable. There is a lot of news whether Germany would become the next Italy or Spain. Not sure. It will depend on how many or how many people take precautions and the data recorded over the next few weeks. Specific information for Indians in Germany. The Indian Embassy in Berlin is regularly updating the information and spreading out a word. Also, the local hotline numbers have been given or passed around the social media. Please follow that. I want to put out a very key message. Avoid travel and unnecessary gatherings unless it's urgent. Do not rely on fake news, data and products. Although there are several... I've also heard this point about there are so many other diseases and people are dying because of that. Or there are other reasons why people are dying and why we are just focusing on this. Does it make sense if if we allow even one additional person to die of any other reason. So if we can prevent it, why why should we not do it? So it's just that if we should not take this situation lightly and try to save every additional life possible. Do not make your own opinions, rely on information and which are accepted by the trustworthy sources globally. Also a message for specifically for countries in South Southeast Asia, the numbers have not gone up until now, but there's a good chance in a month or, or four weeks from now that the number would increase because as we see every day, the cases are increasing. 
and also it depends on how people take precautions and how people take this seriously so it would really matter if you take this seriously now and not panic later on so act now thanks a lot guys